Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees who deny them that there is there is who deny that there is a resurrection came to Jesus and they put this question to him. Master, we have it from Moses in writing, if a man's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, the man must marry the widow to raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a wife and then died leaving no children. The second married the widow and he too died leaving no children. With the third it was the same. And none of the seven left any, ch uh, any children. Last of all, the woman herself died. Now at the resurrection, when they rise again, whose wife will she be? Since she had been married to all seven. Jesus said to them, Is not the reason why you are go wrong, that you understand neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, Men and women do not marry. No, they are like the angels in heaven. Now about the dead rising again, have you never read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him and said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God, not of the dead, but of the living. You are very much mistaken." The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, today we just we were also reflecting about different bondages that how it affects our life and our families. So, in a special way, today let us reflect about these passages and this uh, Bible passage which we just heard. There you can see Sadducees, they don't believe in resurrection, though they know the whole Bible. They are blinded, certain faith, certain area they are blinded. They are with some kind of unnecessary thoughts, imagination, interpretation. Though everybody knows it is complete nonsense that they believe. But still they are blinded with this unnecessary faith. So this, we can see such kinds of people in our communities, in our, among ourselves. There are people who are blinded. Though we all know the truth, they will not know the truth. And um, so they are asking some foolish questions. Like some people ask, how many angels can dance on the head of the needle? Uh, there are some unnecessary foolish questions. There is no meaning in asking these questions. So this is how these people ask these questions. And then Jesus said one statement. He said, "Is not the reason why you go always you always go wrong that you understand neither the scripture nor the power of God. You don't know Bible. You don't understand the scripture. You don't know the power of word of God. That is why you are making to the conclusions. Sometimes the way people speak about God, we understand it is utter nonsense and without any common sense." But still, they don't understand that they, it is something wrong. They are thinking this is the highest knowledge they are handed over by some, uh, some the brilliant people in the world. So this is something they don't realize. They are blinded with some kind of, uh, some kind of bondage. You must have seen people going on boasting about themselves. And all those who are listening, they understand something wrong with this person. Except him, everybody understands something wrong with each person, but that person understands all the others have something wrong, they are perfectly all right. So this is a kind of bondage. We don't know why these things happen, but it is happening. Some people, they go on exaggerating things, unnecessary exaggerating things. Therefore, we know certain people saying, you know, so-and-so, if you listen to so-and-so person, Take only 10% of what he says. Rest is just put it in the junk, uh, the dustbin, because only 10% is correct. So this is how we come to conclusion. I know certain people who say like this, and I have seen people hearing 
talking like this okay when he speaks only 10 percentage take even that is also too much but still take 10 percentage so but at the, that person will never understand uh, that people are talking like this they think they are so smart nobody understands what they are trying to speak so this is something we need to be very careful i remember my own one experience in my family um i was the one who sings well in comparison with others and then uh, they all are very bad they all my siblings and others and anything that comes about singing especially for the family prayer singing time they all look at me so because they are only refuge is me so when and then they used to appreciate me and then i thought i am a very good singer and i started appreciating myself and then any time when priest comes uh, visits our home and suddenly in the prayer priest normally used to say anybody will sing who will sing and then everyone will look at me and then i will look at the priest and say yes I, I, since there is nobody i have to sing i'm ready to sing and then i used to sing and after that the priest since i'm a very small child the priest used to appreciate me and say fantastic fabulous wonderful and then it's a big acknowledgement from a priest and i used to think i am a very good singer and i remember i continued with this identity and uh, i used to be so happy about this anything that songs comes and then i know that i have to do that because there is no one else capable of doing it so uh, then i used to do that and i remember i joined the seminary and then when i joined the seminary in the first year there is uh, you know they used to teach uh, music music especially harmonium there was no key, uh, keyboard and all so the harmonium was the thing we were used and we were using it so um, for one music teacher came so the our rector said this music music teaching is not meant for everyone it is meant for those who are good at music at least basic sense of music so all those who are good in singing and music uh, kindly stand up and there were so many good singers in our group in our batch but i was the first one to stand up and then the uh, and the, my rector though he knows i don't i think he have not heard my singing so he also appreciate me and then he, uh, other teachers the music teacher also was happy that at least one person is and looking at me the other good singers in fact the real singers they also got up hesitantly so at that after that there was a testing time you know the we have to sing one by one singing so when everyone was singing i did not look at them i didn't even hear what they how they singing i was just practicing in my mind and then when i sang i don't know what happened but i was just pushed to the b team there are a team and b team the good singers were selected and chosen as the first team and the second group uh, whom the music teacher wants to just slowly uh, you know give up so i uh, exclude so music teacher made a b team and i was in i was included in that b team i was hurt very much because i'm supposed to be the best in my house and, and you know uh, i know that i am the best in my house and now when i came to the seminary i thought i will be the best i will be one of those the first a team but this music teacher had some jealousy towards me so he put me into the b team and i had this hurt feeling inside though i am a very good singer still he did not accept me i think he is having some identity crisis or something i don't know maybe he felt threatened by my singing so i as just kept quiet but i had this feeling inside and we continued the seminary time and uh, nobody told me that there is something wrong in my singing there is no uh, proper i don't know what exactly that um the rhythm or whatever so it was not there and but still i just went on singing and every time when there is a you know a group song my voice is to be very loud and is to be heard more than anyone else so because i knew that if i don't sing it will collapse everything will collapse so i had to sing 
So I continued and I remember in the novitiate time, that is one year of uh, serious uh, studies, a st serious time. And that was the time we were given in uh, different uh, portfolios, uh, different uh, work responsibilities. So the good singers were selected and given three months each time to lead the music ministry. And then once they were all, they, their turn is over. And one day, since I was considered as a singer uh, um, by our classmates, so since our rector, the new rector, who also thought, okay, give him one more ch one chance. So they made me a music uh, in charge for three months. And I don't know what happened, but within one month, he changed me. So, and then I was felt again bad. And I felt this rector is also feeling threatened by my music. And then I remember one day he called me and he said, how are you? How was your music ministry? And that was the last day of my music ministry. Uh, so before changing me from that post, he had a, uh, a small counseling or whatever that he wanted to speak to me. And he said, I said, very well, it's going on well. And I'm able to sing every song and all these things. And the tune is not a problem. And uh, all these dishes. And then he said, uh, what do you think about your singing? How good it is? I said, it's very good. Uh, it's very good uh, singing. And then he said, okay, we will pray together. And he prayed with me and he prayed over me. And then he told me, just sing one song. And that was the most horrible song I sang in my life. And that was the first time I heard my own singing. So, and then I felt, I said, maybe because my throat problem or something, maybe because I'm scared in front of him. Then he said, my dear brother, you know, your singing is good, but not a, you are not a singer. You, your singing is just maybe below average. So, but don't worry. You have many other talents. Focus on those talents instead of wasting your time in this uh, unnecessary talent which is not there. So um, that was one eye-opening for me. And then I realized very painfully that truth. But it released me, in fact, because after that, then I noticed all the hurts which I was carrying from my first year of seminary, that music teacher who rejected me and all those who rejected in me in different timings. So I got hurt, that mo I got healed um, from that hurt. And remember that day when I came to the chapel, I was supposed to lead the music. And I, when I was singing, I just looked around to see the reactions of the people for the first time. Then I saw the one who was sitting next to me, he was keeping his ears like this. I never noticed this, but he was closing his ears. And that day I noticed, and then I came to know it's time to take a retirement, early retirement from the music ministry. So, in fact, it was a big revelation and it was great help for me and to realize. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the same thing I have noticed in our life. Many areas, we think we are the best. And we think we are 100% right. We think we know every detail. But in fact, we don't know. And nobody tells us. Everyone say, fantastic, fabulous, wonderful, and uh, colorful. And we go on uh, exaggerating. And they will never come to know. And they are in a utopian world. And then, this is a bondage. This is really a bondage. The Lord wants to cleanse us. Sometimes, God may, if we don't accept our own bondages, then may, you may have to go through some humiliating experience. Just like I went through some humiliating experience, at the end came to the truth. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is something that we need to remember. So, you know, we need not only a, a purification for our body from, in order to save, our, save us from the bondages, but our land, our house, wherever we do ministry, wherever that place, the house also need cleansing, purification. That is for sure. The Lord wants to purify not only our body, but also our land and house. Otherwise, there won't be any growth. The, you know, if I was focusing on my music team, music ministry and music uh, skill and everything, I will never focus on my preaching ministry. I will never focus on my other ministries, other talents which God has given me. 
I would have wasted my whole life uh, unnecessarily thinking and, and focusing on music and other things. But the Lord wanted to cleanse me from there and bring me to the right place where I'm supposed to be. So this is the same way, the same thing can happen to a retreat center or even your house, your family. I remember when we started our retreat center here, uh, the Divan Retreat Center is very famous in India. Uh, not this retreat center, but the Divan Retreat Center, Porta, the original, the first retreat center, which is the biggest, the largest Catholic retreat center in the world. And then when people came to know that Divan Retreat Center, a branch is going to be opened in Ramsgate, UK. I remember for the first, the anniversary that we had conducted, 2014, March 16, uh, Thousand, more than 1,200 or 400 people came here for the inauguration. And then myself and Father George Panickel, we were appointed as the first members here. And after the inauguration, Father George went for a, a retreat in America. And I was here. I was, a, I was alone here. And then some volunteers were helping us. And I remember our first one-day convention that we conducted here after the inauguration. So since we had 1,200 or 400, around 1,500 people for the inauguration here, then I was 100% sure for the one-day convention that we are going to have, we will have minimum 700 people. Half, half, at least half of the crowd who came for the inauguration will be there for the first one-day convention. So I remember I have arranged so many volunteers here and there and then and in the we kept chairs all the corridor in the main hall and outside hall and in, and also some people were appointed to take care of the parking to uh, keep the vehicles in different places and then uh, traffic control and so many responsibilities were divided among the volunteers and the time came and the next day uh, with previously the, all the arrangements were done the next day was the one day convention and then i remember uh, the retreat supposed to take place at 9, 9, 9.30 and nobody was there and 10 o'clock one car came and then 12 o'clock the second car came and totally the whole service we had only 20 people and two cars and I had up appointed so many volunteers to, for traffic jam uh, to uh, control the traffic and all those things and they all looked at me and I was so uh, embarrassing moment and I realized so painfully it is not easy for the people to come just because the fame and name of the Divine Retreat Center the people need not come and that was the time and it was a big realization and then I understood we have to start from the scratches and uh, so then we had a residential retreat in English and it was just only 12 people here and when though we had given so many publicity and I remember the first one retreat that we had that was in Malayalam and then everyone wanted to have Father George Panekal and everybody knows Father George Panekal and Father George was in America at that time and he was supposed to come for the first one uh, retreat that Malayalam retreat but he did could not come because something happened and, and his train uh, I mean, uh, flight got uh, cancelled and then he had to change his ticket and all those things. And uh, he had to extend. I mean, he had to, uh, he got the uh, possibility of coming only after one or two weeks uh, later after the retreat. So somehow this news was leaked out and every, some people came to know that that retreat, Father George won't be there to lead the retreat. And only Father Joseph will be leading the retreat. And then within no time, the news spread one by one. People, there were around 60 or 70 people had booked that since it was a Malayalam retreat and Father George is known everywhere. And I remember the first person one day called and said, Father, when is the retreat? I told the date. And then he said, so uh, uh, is Father George will be there for the retreat? I said, no. And uh, then he said, when is he going to come back? Then I said, after two weeks. So is there any retreat after two weeks? Yes. So can you cancel this and uh, make appointment for that retreat? And likewise, one by one, all the people started canceling the retreat. And I remember uh, from the next day and the third day, I was getting so many phone calls. 
and then one day one person called me and I was got and slowly I got irritated because these people who booked and then we were making all the arrangements and suddenly uh, they started cancelling and then one day one person called me and said father is there a retreat I said yes then he said who is leading the retreat so then I said Jesus Christ is leading the retreat then he said who else is there and he wants to know who else other than Jesus is to lead the retreat then I knew it is not possible to convince these people and then I called Father George and said either uh, you have to take a special chartered plane and come here for the retreat or we may have to cancel the retreat and then father uh, father said don't worry just cancel the retreat because we had only at the end only five or six people uh, left uh, though there are 60 70 people had booked in initially then father said it's better to cancel the retreat and just inform the rest of the people the retreat is for uh, you know um, the postponed to the next uh, month then i told those people who are remaining and they were also happy to know that father is not there and will be available only next month so they were happy to cancel so but on that day when the time came for the retreat on the day of the retreat when we were expecting no one because everyone who booked had cancelled and then suddenly i remember I, I one lady came with so much of bag and luggage and everything she came then all the people, all of us, we came to speak to her because we were wondering why she came. And then she said, uh, I have, I've come for retreat. Then we asked, did you book, book the uh, seat? Then she said, no, I have not booked, but I had taken holiday one month before and I have come all the way from Scotland. And now I have come only for this retreat. So I was praying, praying and waiting for this retreat. Then... Uh, we felt so bad that she had come all the way from Scotland and she had take, uh, booked uh, and taken holy day one month before and she didn't know that the retreat was cancelled. She thought at least the last moment she can come and attend. And then uh, I said, okay, there is a retreat, but only you will be there. So then she agreed and then we had a retreat in a small room and uh, we had uh, three days of retreat. And I was preaching to her one hour and 50 minutes break, another hour, 50 minutes break. And likewise, three days sitting face to face, she had attended maybe for the first time in her life a retreat only for her for three days. And I remember the last day I just asked her, what do you feel uh, the third day of the retreat? What do you feel about this retreat? Are you happy that you came for this retreat? Then she looked at me and said, Father, I have heard all these things already. So then I knew it's time to uh, uh, complete the retreat. And then we had that retreat completed that day. So I was just the other day, I was reflecting about all these things. So this is our initial days of the Divinity Center UK here in Ramsgate. And all these so many years, there were lots of purification, lots of struggles, lots of suffering, lots of uh, humiliating experiences the Lord has led us through. And at the end, now the way the Lord is leading us uh, right now during this COVID-19, that is a different story. My dear brothers and sisters, we read like this in the Word of God, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, we read like this. The word of God says very clearly, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So not only our sins should be forgiven, the land also should be consecrated and healed. So that is why sometimes initially you will have some boosting. And then suddenly, you may have to start everything from scratches. Lots of prayer, lots of penances, lots of sacrifices, slowly, 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 slowly. At the end, suddenly another boost. So this is common. It is, it is in our life too. The, sometimes you may have a time of darkness in your whole life. I mean, for a long time. You may have continuous sickness, everybody in the family is sick, getting sick, and so many problems, so many uh, uh, turmoil, storms in your family life. And suddenly, unexpected, everything just disappears and they're boosting. 
So this is because the Lord is purifying your land, purifying your family, purifying yourself. And we all have to go through, even retreat centers and even churches and, and places of worship go through the same kind of experience of deliverance. So we may also have to go through. When you go through this time of darkness, the, the period of darkness, don't get disappointed, don't get frustrated, don't give up hope in God, but continue holding on to God, continue the penances and sacrifices. In due time, Lord, the Lord will lift you up. The, in due time, the Lord will lift you up and use you powerfully. So this is what God wants to tell us. Wisdom chapter 4 verse 13 and 14. We read like this. Wisdom chapter 4 verse 13 and 14. The word of God says very clearly in this passage. Wisdom chapter 4 verse 13 and 14. Let's read this word of God. Being perfected in a short time, they fulfilled long years. If you are ready to be perfected or purified in a short time, then your long years of suffering will be just reduced. If you don't cooperate, if you are not ready to be perfected, then you may have to go through these long years. The Israelites, they could have reached the promised land within 11 days as per the geographical distance. But the Lord wanted to purify them from the contamination of the Egyptian culture, which they were affected with, influenced by, by the Egyptians for more than 400 years, 430 years or around. So the Lord wanted to purify them from the influence of the Egyptian culture. Therefore, God took them to a difficult path through the desert and then took almost 40 years. Why 40 years? Because they were rebellious. They were rejecting the purification process of God. The more the Lord was purifying them, the more they rejected and denied God. Then the Lord said, okay, go one more lap. One more lap around the promised land. Made them walk around the promised land. One more lap, one more lap, one more lap. After one lap, God asked them, are you changed? Then they started again rebelling against God, rebellious towards God. Then the Lord knew they, they, they need still a small shock treatment one more lap and likewise 40 years they made uh, go, going around the promised land after 40 years god made them to enter into the promised land because not because they all changed but because they all died and the new generation their children were grown up and they had no touch of the egyptians no touch of the egyptian culture they had purified new generation and the lord said now you enter and they entered into the promised land. That is why even today if you look, go to Egypt and go to Israel. There is a, a difference of night and darkness. Sorry, night, night and day. So there is a difference of these. Because if you go to Egypt, entirely different situation. If you go to Israel, this is a prosperous and uh, fertile land. A beautiful land God has given. Because not only the land but also the people. The uh, culture is entirely different culture. No Egyptian culture is in, involved in Israel. No mummies and mummies there in the uh, Israel, but only in Egypt because there is everything was purified. So if they had cooperated with God initially at the first time itself, they would not have gone through these 40 years of turmoil struggles. They could have reached in within no time, within one month or so. But they were rebellious. Therefore, they had to make a long years. Being perfected in a short time, they fulfilled long years. Verse 14. For their souls were pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, God took them quickly from the midst of wickedness. If your soul is pleasing to the Lord. If you know your weaknesses and shortcomings and you repent of your sin. The Lord will take you quickly from the midst of wickedness and problems and sufferings and struggles many people are still in the wickedness because their soul is not pleasing to the lord they are not getting purified they are not purifying they are not allowing god to purify themselves they are still hiding behind their guilt feeling some people they are rejected from their childhood by their parents, no parents or no family members and abandoned, maybe taken up by someone else and brought up. Even in their old age, even though they have attended many retreats, 
whenever they have some weakness whenever something happens they say you know i am a rejected person i have gone through lots of rejection i cannot face these kinds of problem they are hiding they are hiding behind these so called excuse of rejection they will never come out of their problem they will continue in these rejections will never get healed rejection should never be a hiding place rejection is something that is evil that we need to come out of it some people they i know uh, one uh, person asked a, a a person who was uh, had some problem with the leg and he had the leg was so horrible and he was begging on the road side and then a doctor came and told him do you want to be healed do you want to be uh, i can sponsor everything and make you give you uh, uh, healing and i can arrange doctors and and uh, make uh, you healed completely then this beggar said doctor if you heal me and then i'm healed then how am i going to survive after that you will send me to the road and i have not nothing to get the compassion of the people and everyone who look at me will tell me to go and work hard and get some money now because of this wound i'm getting lots of money every day and i'm surviving see he is hiding behind his weakness he doesn't want to be healed this is a bondage they don't realize the other life they are comfortable with this painful life they are happy in this painful life there are some people who are torturing themselves you not know, self harming tendency they are enjoying that they don't want to come out of it they don't realize there is another life which is entirely opposite where you don't need to torture but there is happiness they don't realize this is a bondage these are the bondages that we need to get freed from and that is why we this we have this corpus christi retreat we need only the precious blood of jesus can heal and cleanse us in this from these bondages therefore my dear brothers and sisters as we celebrate this holy eucharist let's offer all the intentions that we have and ask jesus to cleanse us from all the hidden bondages which we are not aware of but it's still active in our body in our personal life we let's ask god god reveal to me all the hidden bondages which everybody else knows about me but i myself doesn't know about me please reveal the secrets of my own bondages which are controlling my life which is blocking my spiritual growth help me to come out of these bondages and grow spiritually as you want me to grow lord help me to grow in this area lord thank you lord